Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be discussing some weird oddities I've seen recently with DNS, Domain Name System, in particular regarding subdomains that have been in use and that are very undocumented as to what they actually are. But first let's get an understanding of how DNS works, how your computer takes this very readable word here and is able to then connect to a specific numerical IP address to a web server that's going to deliver you this content to your web browser. So computers don't read from left to right directly here. What we do is they, they start from the center before the first forward slash, and for the DNS lookup, they go from right to left, resolving, well, in this case for Wikipedia, it would be resolving org wikipedia en. And then they go from left to right, requesting the folder of wiki and then domain name system, which presents me with this page here. Similar sort of thing with KDE, uh, the .kde.org, and this is what I'll show you on DIG. DIG or NSLOOKUP actually gives you the IP address for where, in this case, kde.org is housed. So that is the IP address it's on, 136, 243, blah, blah, blah. And in the case of dots.kd.org, it's in a different location. With regards to subdomains, any owner of a website can actually make up as many subdomains as they want. And you could even put them in different locations, as we can see here. So I'm going to use this service from Cisco, Cisco Investigate, which they actually log a lot of information about domain names and IP addresses. And they take all this information from both their commercial offering and their free offering, which is OpenDNS. So this domain, avsvmcloud.com, was used in the recent compromise of SolarWinds. It is owned by a Russian agency, we do believe, and was used for something called domain generating algorithms. The algorithm generates a very random looking string, but the string can actually be decoded and it contains data about the host computer and in the network it's installed upon. So the data can be exfiltrated through the use of a DNS lookup, and it doesn't matter this subdomain doesn't exist. As long as it's being logged on the attacker's DNS server, you know, doesn't matter. The response doesn't matter, although the response in this case does mean something further, because they were utilising the different IP addresses in the response to tell the malware what to do next. So this is the use of subdomains that is open for abuse in exfiltrating data. But not everything is that way. There's also other uses for it. And another use is in regards to tracking. Internet tracking, looking at what people do on websites and looking at this website, onlinemetrics.net, well, we can see it has loads of different subdomains. Hmm. Now these subdomains could be used to either identify different visitors or be used to identify the source website. Who knows what Microsoft is doing with this one with fp.measure.office.com, but again, they have absolutely loads of different subdomains. Ultimately, Microsoft are in control of what they choose to resolve on this piece of information. There is a limitation on how many characters you can put in here, and it is 63 per, well, each of these sections is called a label, with the overall length being limited to 253 characters. But one possible use of this is to trip up blocking via the slash etc slash host file. So if I go and edit the slash etc slash host file on my system, the etc host file is the first sort of DNS resolver that my computer would reach out to when it's trying to get to the IP address for a website. In the case of my system here, it's only got a couple of addresses in here, and these are for the local host. This is a loopback. But it can be used for blocking ad servers and trackers. But it's very crude. I'll show you why it is so crude. So if I put in a loopback IP address for, well, let's say, tremorhub.com, and I save that, and then I use dig to look up the IP address for tremorhub.com, and yeah, we can see 
it's resolved straight to the IP I've given it in the etc host file. Oh, there is also a variation in Windows for this same sort of file. It's in a slightly different location, but it's actually named a very similar thing. So if I actually look up a subdomain on tremorhub.com, let's look up on their subdomains that's actually in use. Well, that didn't work, did it? Because I've now completely bypassed that sort of, I suppose you could call it a block in etc host, and it's gone straight to a different IP address, which is actually my DNS server, which is doing the blocking. So you can see that can be used for nefarious reasons by tracking and advertising companies to prevent blocking via that method. And they've got a lot of subdomains, a lot of them. As we can see, if we try and scroll through these pages that Cisco have logged. So if you want to try and do this manual blocking for the ETC hosts, you're going to have to block all these different variations. And yet there can be hundreds and thousands. So blocking via the ETC host is not very reliable at all. So what of that subdomain I put in, where does that go? Well, it's very new. <laughs> very new and very popular all of a sudden. Okay, let's, let's look at some other oddities with domains. Moving across to China. This website, v6lvs.com. Bit sporadic there on visitor count and fairly low numbers. But the DNS resolution, that resolves to, well, effectively colon colon one if you're IPv6 or 127.0.0.1. But wait, something else resolved to 127.0.0.1. It's local host. So why is a server on the internet resolving to local host? Because if I went there, that would just redirect me back to my system. Hmm. So just because the main domain of v6lvs.com resolves to the loopback address, it doesn't mean the subdomains do. And there's a lot of different subdomains with uh, this domain. And they all look like other legitimate Chinese websites. <laughs> that is weird. Very weird. But yeah, looking at a sample of these subdomains, well, let's take jxww.com.cn, resolves to that selection of IP addresses, shbtp.com.cn resolves to yeah, a different IP address. And well, what's this? tyng.com.cn resolves to yet a different selection of IP addresses. So yeah, that is all very unusual. What is going on here? I don't know. And there doesn't appear to be a whole lot of information about it, really. So what about some other oddities from China? I've got a few more here. So greengrowth.space, hmm. I'm actually more interested in the subdomains. Subdomains, what have we got here? Okay, let, let's just pick one of these, shall we? And let's open up a text editor, preferably with mono-sized fonts. So let's take that one. And let, let's try this one as well, longerbeach.com. What have we got here? Bit of a different visitor profile, but uh, you know, it's got some subdomains as well, hasn't it? Yeah. Okay, let's take a copy of one of these and uh, put, it, put it across into the text editor. Mm, okay. Oh, what about, what about another one? Magic1.info. Mm, okay, come on. Different visitor profile again, and yeah, it's got some subdomains here, isn't it, as well? Okay, so let's take a copy of this and uh, we'll put it here as well, yep. Yeah. Uh, okay, continuing on, nanogardens.tech. What have we got here? Oh, yeah, different visitor profile again. Oh, that's not really interesting, the visitor profile. Let's let's go straight to the subdomains. Okay, we'll take a copy of one of those, and yep, do that again. Uh, <laughs> you're starting to see a pattern, yet. Yeah? Openair.pw, what about this one? Uh, okay. Uh, by the way, where are these visits coming from? Oh yeah, mostly in China, aren't they? Yeah, mostly in China. There's a definite distinct pattern here. It is China. So, oh, got another subdomain there, and let's take a copy of that. <laughs> and I'm just gonna skip the video and I'm gonna fill the rest of these in. But yeah, I'll, I'll show you how many there are. Here is a list of the domains that follow that exact same pattern that I'm aware of with those subdomains. And you'll notice that is very distinct there distinct to the point that you could write a regular expression for it. So that is 16 characters, a dot, 
another 16 characters, dot s dot, and the domain name. So it's a bit difficult to get a complete understanding of where this is used, but yeah, I do believe it's used for tracking. And what we can see mentions here of qq.com and co-occurrences with what's that, Teabao and HighCloud. So yeah, just a little bit of a coincidence really. But that is some of the oddities I have seen with DNS. It uh, can certainly be abused for exfiltrating data from a computer and also be used for more benign but annoying purposes for tracking. In particular, circumventing block lists on the ETC hosts or just trying to be completely disguising the fact that it is tracking. So I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.